Yeah, so this is the sled I made for making Celtic knot wand handles. Um, it's just a piece of MDF with a piece of scrap redwood I had screwed to the bottom. Uh, there's two pieces of MDF glued to the bottom that run in the, the channels. And it just slides through the uh, stops here and clamped here are set to make this at a 25 degree angle. So that nestles up against that and like that. And then when you run it through, it makes a nice long cut that works out to be about, you know, my hand size. So it works out for a good uh, handle. I have a little scrap piece of this that I use once I've run it through once, I shift this and bump it up just to make the cut a little bit wider so that it fits the inlay. Uh, today we're using this, which is a piece of bingo with a black veneer glued to either side of it, and this piece of um, dark roast maple is what we're going to be inlaying that into. So the, the basic process, you run it through once, you glue in the inlay, then you'll make a quarter turn, run it through, lay in your inlay, obviously let it dry between going through, turn it, quarter turn, run it through, do your inlay, run it through the fourth time, and, uh, and that gives you your four cuts going through with your inlay. Um, one trick I learned is when you're setting your blade height, you want to set it so that it's just below the, the top edge so that you get a little space there. What that does is it helps so you don't have to glue two pieces of separate wood with the inlay between it because you'll get everything all twisted and you know it's very hard to line everything up whereas if you leave that little bit of wood this stays solid and you just have to slot in your inlay and let the glue dry um, and I use a little bit I use a clamp just to make sure everything's tight but there's no alignment issues and once it's once it's dried you're back to having one nice solid piece. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So the first part of that was cutting the, the first slot, and I already glued together this to get 
little bit of a black outline to the red inlay. And now we're gonna glue this in here and get it all glued up. Just put some glue on one side. Good measure. There we go. And we'll let that set up till tomorrow. Okay, so here's our first piece after it's been cut and inlaid and dried. Um, so leaving this little a bit here left this being very straight and true so we get a nice straight inlay um, that's important so when we go to our next cuts this sits flat and we get the same the same start and end points so that our knots not shifted um, in one direction or the other so that once it's lined up with these points you know, it makes the knot look nice and even. So we're going to make the, this one was run through that way. So we're going to do a quarter turn and run it through that way. Okay, so I made the second cut and you can see it's a quarter turn off of our old cut. And this way, so we had a quarter turn, now it's that way. Use the piece that I cut off of the last inlay, and we're gonna glue it in there, and then let it dry overnight. Okay, so we have the final blank made up with the inlaid knot. Um, it looks a little bit funky at this time because the the cut that we did going this way we left that gap at the top so you won't see the other x so this this piece of inlay going there doesn't show through on this side because of the way we left the gap so when we turn this we'll cut through that and you'll see it appear here. It's kind of an interesting process. But that's what the final blank looks like once you get all four sides inlaid. And then like I said, once you, once you turn down that thickness that we left at the top, 
open the the other half of the the knot that comes up the top will be visible. So here I am just turning, got it in my lathe, and I'm just starting to turn it down from the square cross section to the round cross section, and you can start to see where the other the other side of that X that was hidden before is starting to show through where we um, didn't cut all the way through the one side when we were doing the, the work on the table saw. Now that we're cutting through that top layer, it's starting to appear. And so you'll see the whole knot as it goes, goes around. This one's still got to go a little bit further. And so does that one, but we're starting to see them. Starting to see them show up. Alright, so here's the final knot. Turned out very well. And most of the wand is now turned down to size, just gotta sand it and finish it and figure out what I'm going to do to finish the bottom down here. And so I just did a quick sanding down to 150 and then put some of this on here just to give us a quick preview of what it'll look like when it's all varnished up. And fully sanded, but it'll Turns the maple dark and the dark roast maple. Brings out the reds. Yeah, so here we've got the finished one. And it's got a couple of coats of tongue oil on it. You can see it brings out the nice shimmer in it. So now we're going to put a um, 10 millimeter um, light blue spinel in the end, which I set into an earring setting. And for that we're going to start by drilling a pilot hole with this called a pin vise. I'm just going to drill in the end and that will give a place for the prong to get glued in. And then I'll use progressively bigger drill bits until we get to the 10 millimeter size so that this will sit inside there. And I'll give you a shot of where we're done drilling the hole. 